Hey everybody, I'm Steven. And I'm Sam. And we're here to talk to you today about one of our favorite new programs that we found called Moonlight. And Moonlight lets you play video games from devices by installing it without having to use a console. And you have to have an NVIDIA graphics card and a PC to do this, but as long as you have a PC with an NVIDIA graphics card, you can install Moonlight on a client device and then play your PC games anywhere in the world. Uh, so what, what's your favorite way that you use Moonlight, Sam? Well, growing up, my favorite game was Ocarina of Time. Now, steering out of the, you know, it's obviously not on Steam or anything like that. So once you get it ported to the PC, which they do have available, I really like that I can play it from a TV, my phone, whichever way. It, it beats sitting in your computer chair. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's comfortable to sit there sometimes, but I like the flexibility of being able to play it um, different places. Yeah, so let's, let's go ahead and show them what you're talking about. So I've got a, a wireless N64 controller, and we've got it plugged into the TV, and let's go ahead and switch over to the TV, and I'll show you how we do this. Okay, everybody, so I've got my wireless N64 controller, and it comes with this USB stick. So what you have to do is plug the USB stick into the back of the TV and pair it to your controller. Um, so after it's paired to the controller, you can go ahead and connect to the USB stick, and it will allow you to control the TV. So now that we have control of our TV, we can go to the home screen, and Moonlight uh, shows up just like any other app. So Moonlight is compatible uh, directly with any of the Amazon Fire TVs, and it's also available on Apple TVs um, and Android TVs. It is not uh, available in, uh, natively on Samsung or uh, the LG with the WebOS system. It does have a port for the WebOS system so that you can install it as a developer, uh, but for those that do not have the developer skill set, um, you might want to go ahead and stick with an Amazon TV, an Android TV, or a uh, uh, Apple TV as well. So when you do have compatibility with it, so we have our Fire TV from uh, Amazon and it has the Moonlight app. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Moonlight app and we have our computers. So Sam's computer and my computer are paired with uh, Moonlight so we can play off of either of our computers. And then when I open up mine up, I've got some of my games up here um, and like Sam was saying, our favorite game right here, Legend of Zelda, so we can play it right off the front. Um, I've also got some of my Steam games, so I've got Grand Theft Auto V and I've got Counter-Strike. And then another cool feature is we have emulators. We can run Steam off of Moonlight, or we can do a virtual desktop and run our entire desktop off of Moonlight so that we can play uh, maybe games that aren't native to this uh, GE Force experience. So let's uh, go ahead and demonstrate like what you were saying. Let's play some Legend of Zelda and we'll open up and I'll show you what it looks like to use uh, the system. So we've got uh, the game already loaded and then the controller. And I believe we got these controllers on eBay, right Sam? Yep. And uh, how, much, how much were these? They were like 35 each. Okay, so about $35. Uh, for the N64 controller, but this is the, in our opinion, this is the best way to play Ocarina of Time, so we had to get these. Um, so, loads up really easily, right? Uh, and we're playing on this on my PC, so the specs on mine, uh, I'm using an i9 uh, with a uh, GTX 3070. Um, and then we can get out of this by opening up the Moonlight menu which is kind of weird on these N64 controllers. You have to hold down a bunch of weird buttons at the same time. Um, but we can leave. And the cool thing about Moonlight is now that I've closed down the program on the client device, which is our TV, um, it isn't closed down on the computer. So I can now open this up again and it'll be right where we left off. So let's do that and I'll show you. Bam, right where we left off, right? So we can save, close it out, everything, right? Um, so let's close out of this now and open up 
a different game, and we can use a different controller too. Um, so I'll demonstrate another controller for you now. I'll unplug the USB on this one. All right, so what if we're playing a different game that we don't want to use an N64 controller for, like a PS4 controller for Grand Theft Auto V? Well, then we got to add it to the TV. So go ahead and take your remote. Um, if, it's, if you aren't using something like an N64 controller, you can use your TV remote. And let's go to settings, controllers, and Bluetooth devices, game controllers, add new game controller. And then if you're using a PS4 controller, the way to do this is you hold down the share button, which is your top left, and then your home button, which is the bottom middle, and it should start flashing. And now that it's flashing, the wireless controller's up there, we're going to pair the controller, and now our, N60, or our uh, PS4 controller is controlling the TV. So now we don't need our remote anymore. Let's go back to our main menu using the PS4 controller, and we'll go back to our Moonlight game streaming service, and instead of opening up Legend of Zelda, let's go ahead and open up Grand Theft Auto V. And when we do this, it's asking us, do we want to quit our uh, current game and start the new one? Yes, so I'm gonna quit Legend of Zelda. So if you're playing one game and you haven't saved, make sure you save before you do this, because you may lose, well, you're going to lose your data. Um, so we have GTA V launching. Another thing that we uh, highly recommend if you're going to use Moonlight, especially when streaming games that are going to be high graphics demand, is having an Ethernetted host, so making sure that your gaming PC is connected into an Ethernet port and that your client is connected into an Ethernet port. So our TVs that we use for Moonlight um, on our higher graphics load games are connected to an Ethernet. Um, for games that are not as graphics intensive, so when we play N64 games, we can do that on our TVs over Wi-Fi, or our tablets, or phones, or anything like that. For phones, you can actually play high graphics load uh, games over wireless, which is interesting because they have uh, faster uh, processing for the uh, wireless data compared to a lot of household uh, items. The other thing is, if you're doing it over wireless, you're going to want to use a 5.0 or something like a 5.1. You're not going to use a 2.4. So, that's pretty cool, huh? So, let's go ahead and close this out. Same thing. So, we hit all those four buttons. We can get back to the home screen. Um, and, uh, let's go ahead and do something else. Let's show another device that we can use Moonlight on. Cool, so now that we've gone over how we can use Moonlight to stream games from our PC to a TV as a client device, uh, I think that there are some other cool client devices that we can use to play these games on as well. So what do you think, Sam? Yeah, let's go ahead and show them since we've been mentioning phones and I feel like that's the best for last. Everybody has a phone for the most part nowadays with the smart capabilities. So this is a Samsung S21, um, which was uh, off the top of my head. I can't remember the graphics card that's in here. This one, I believe, Snapdragon? is a... No, I don't think the 21 is a Snapdragon yet. I think this is an Octo-Core. Um, but I think you can use anything running Android 11 or newer. I believe that that's what Moonlight says. Uh, so let's go ahead... Open it. So what we have here too is a Kashi from Razer. Razer. Yeah, Razer I think it's Kashi. Razer Kashi is what it is. So it's a kind of cool little remote. It's almost like it looks kind of like a switch remote uh, in a way or a controller. Um, the nice thing is you can put your phone in it and use it just like pretty much a switch. Um, the one thing is you have to take your phone case off. That seems to not be able to fit without it. Yeah, it so off. it doesn't want to fit in the charger port. So what we want to do here is I have Moonlight and it's just an app on my home screen. And when we open it up, it's very similar to the app that we saw on the computer. And with the uh, Razer Kashi, like Sam was saying, uh, you just plug it in and it either connects wirelessly over Bluetooth, kind of like the controllers, 
or like ours, it has a C port. Uh, so with the uh, devices, if you have an uh, iPhone, you wanna use an iPhone port. If you have a Samsung, you're gonna wanna use a Type-C port. But if you get one with a charging port, it allows you to plug your device in while you're playing it. So if your battery is going to rapidly deplete because you're playing a high graphics load game, that's the way to go is so that you can have a charging port while you're playing versus a wireless one that's just going to be depending on the battery. Yep, and it's already connected. It's completely, um, it's moving around already for me to select games. Um, I'll go ahead and select. Um, what do you want to do? Here. Let's, you want to oh, show them. So let's do an emulator. Uh, so go ahead and do PCSX2. So PCSX2 is probably the most popular uh, uh, PlayStation 2 emulator. So what an emulator does is it uh, emulates the environment that you would basically use for a video game console. So PCSX2 basically makes it a virtual PlayStation 2 video game console that then you can play your games on. So games are on files that are called ROMs the read-only memory uh, files, mm -hmm. and those files uh, need to be opened up in that PlayStation 2 environment and able for them to appropriate, uh, read the code appropriately. So now that we've got PCSX2 loaded up here, and one thing that we will mention is to get PCSX2 working properly on Moonlight, we did have to write two lines of script. We can include in the description below on which lines of code, yes. that way it's completely simple for you and you can get up and running without having to figure it out yourself and Google around other places. But if you look, we have it open. And Steven, I was kind of, this is his phone, so I'm not typically playing around with it with this controller. So you get to see like a new user here playing with it. Um, I get a menu here that says for game list, start files, start BIOS, um, start disk, settings, and exit. So it's real similar to even RetroArch is what it kind of looks like yep. to me. Um, if we wanted to start a game, I'm assuming just click so start file, right? Actually, you are going to want to go to game, game list. list. Yeah, so game list, what it does oh, is okay, it's cool. opening up. These are all files that are stored on the PC. So remember, none of this is actually data that is on the phone. The phone is only a client device that is displaying data from the computer. So now uh, Sam's showing, she's looking through all these different games, he has all right? These ROMs on here. Yeah, so I have all no, of my PlayStation 2 ROMs, right? So any of my PlayStation 1 ROMs, any of my PlayStation 2 ROMs, we can now open them up and play them. So do you see any fun games that you uh, recognize up there? You want to show um, them? There's a lot I recognize, but we'll go ahead and do. Well, Spyro's right here, so let's go to Spyro. And how about while you're opening up Spyro, I look over your shoulder so they can see too. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty, um, I mean, I only made, you know, not being a little bit of a novice user with it. I was clicking around. It was pretty quick to learn which, you know, buttons are which. The graphics are smooth. There's no lag. So you as also, smooth as for a PS2 game. You have be. a Switch too, right? Correct, I so do. So what do you think about this versus the Switch? Um, I think it's actually pretty similar. The only difference is the screen's just a little bit smaller, but to be honest, this is really portable, so if you're on like a vacation trip and just hanging out in a hotel room, I think that so maybe this is kind of like nice because you always have your phone charged for the most part, you know? Maybe if you had like an iPhone Plus or like a Galaxy Plus or something like that. Yeah. Or a, a Note, maybe a bigger one that, uh, the, it looks like the Razer Kashi has a little bit of the edge to it as well where you can have um like, like, like a, a larger little, phone yeah yeah like but, it has a bit more space there i don't have the biggest phone i have an s21 i don't but like but honestly phones. this is still a really good option i think because everybody has a smartphone now a lot of people yeah, do have sure. samsung's i mean it's really a great I, I think option the biggest bullet device and this is going to be that nvidia graphics card but um i mean if you can bite that bullet and go ahead and pick up an nvidia graphics card i think i'd rather do this than any console because you're not really limited in your options you can play any game on this um and also you it is available on the iphone and i i do have an iphone myself so i'll be investigating and seeing how it loads on um the iphone but Ultimately, you know, there's options here, but like he said, the barrier to entry for this would be the NVIDIA graphics card, which, you know, it depends on how much you want to invest in your gaming um, hobbies. Yeah. But I think it's an excellent um, so I, option. I, I think the way that I look at it is 
let's say a PS5 is $500 and an Xbox is you know, $400. Well, it's $900 in two consoles. If I put $900 into a gaming PC, I would have a pretty decent gaming rig that now I can play anywhere versus two consoles where I do have to use their native uh, streaming services. So you have to use Xbox for Xbox or you have to use uh, PlayStation streaming service for PlayStation. I don't think that you can use something like Moonlight and have one app that you can use on all devices um, I mean, without the console. And honestly, this is really awesome. I mean, I'm just messing around right now on Spyro. There's a little bit of some maybe pixelation, but it's not that bad. I mean, this is a really great option, I think. So. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely not, I mean, this is on an emulator too. So this isn't even uh, on like a PC game. So it's probably why pixelation is showing up on this is it's, I mean, this is really some new technology being able to play an emulator like this virtually. So super exciting. So now that we've shown you some of the options, it's pretty crazy because, you know, born in the 90s, growing up with the 64 and GameCube and all that, you had to be set, you know, stationary at a TV. It's really cool now we have these mobile options that never saw happening really as a four-year-old kid playing like a Game Boy even. Like, I mean, a Game Boy is not nearly as nice as this. Yeah, you know? it's really cool, yeah. yeah. And we're playing like PS2 games and whatever else. Yeah, all the way up to modern games that are on the PS5, PS4, Xbox One. Um, all, you know, being able to play something like that on a Galaxy um, is just mind blowing. And uh, I know now with this uh, new Snapdragon uh, 8 V2 coming out, that's really going to uh, set the bar even an, another step higher on what you can play on these mobile devices. Uh, so I think this next year is going to be very, very cool for technology um, to really push the limits and play some high graphics load games on, on something like a cell phone mobile. Um, so let's just talk about everything we looked at. We showed uh, wireless USB N64 controllers. We showed uh, in connecting those to a TV. We showed PS4 controllers. And this one isn't even a PS4 controller. It's a $17 uh, import uh, that we bought on Amazon or Alibaba, I think, $17. We should also note um, how much roughly was the Razer I think the Kashi? Razer Kashi is now $30 on Amazon. So bad. that is not a bad investment. So if you have a cell phone already, spending another $30 on a device like that to have a portable handheld gaming rig, it's very nice. Um, and we said this this is probably equivalent in price to that. So $35 for either of those controllers. This one from Alibaba was 17 Data Frog is the name of this one. Um, so we talked the Moonlight app. So let's let uh, we before we conclude, we should talk about the elephant in the room, Steam Link, right? Um, oh yeah, the other options. The other options, yeah. or, or the what do we else? What else do we have? We have Parsec, right? So there are a few other options that we have here. So why why do we like Moonlight, maybe over Steam Link or Parsec? Um, Parsec, the only reason is that it's a paid service. If it were free. Um, then we would be promoting it more. And it is not that Parsec is bad, and it's not that they are bad to pay for a higher quality streaming service. If you would like to pay for a higher quality streaming service, yes, we do highly recommend Parsec. If you would not like to pay for a streaming service for your games, and you have an NVIDIA graphics card, and you uh, can load programs relatively easily to, to operate your games, then we would recommend you use Moonlight so that you don't have to pay for your gaming streaming services. Um, Steam Link, the great option about Moonlight is that it completely integrates Steam Link. So you don't lose any of your Steam Link functionality, but then you get the uh, added benefits of remote desktop, game emulation, streaming, PC ports, all of those things that you can't do on a Steam Link. And for Steam Link, I don't believe you have to pay anything extra for it. No, 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 there's so nothing that you have to pay. To so you. all of that's free. Being able to include your Steam Link in a Moonlight, it's a fantastic option for those with the NVIDIA graphics cards, which I know are a hot commodity. So please do not go rob your cousins or neighbors <laughs> for their NVIDIA graphics cards. Uh, don't sell any gold teeth. Just wait for the market to cool down and you will get one soon. All right. Thank you for watching. Thanks, everybody. And let us know in the comments if you would like us to do any other reviews.